The team, it's the Boston Celtics. It's the Boston Celtics. I mean, but because when you think about it for a second, this is a team that 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 was in the finals last year. This is a team I thought that if their superstar would have had rose to the occasion, they would have won the NBA championship. This is a team that added depth, that has the deepest team in the NBA. And I know people are going to say, oh, they have time and they're young and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they're going to continue to get better and they're only, you know, 25 years of age. But we can't, we don't know that. We don't know that. And the way that the league is going with players, you know, requesting trades and, 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 and demanding trades and things to that nature and moving on, we have to realize that in this short stint with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they have went to multiple conference finals. They went to the NBA finals. And the pressure that you have being on in that organization and being in that city is to win now. Zero excuses. So we can't say that they're young anymore because, yeah, they might be young, but they have old souls and they have experience. So with the depth that they have, the pressure is on them. And it's so wide open right now that they have to complete the mission. They have went all in for us getting the pieces and adding Malcolm Brogdon and Malcolm Brogdon sacrifice of coming in off the bench. So if I had to pick any team out of the league for us who has the most at stake for us winning the championship and the pressures on them, I got to go with the Boston Celtics. Whenever we have a discussion about what's at stake, I always bring this up. Stephen, I know we've talked about this on Countdown as well. And when I think about what's at stake, I think about consequences. I think about repercussions. Now, if the Boston Celtics don't win the championship this year, yes, there may be repercussions and there may be consequences. And certainly, there's going to be even more pressure going forward, whether that's on Brad Stevens, whether that's on Joe Missoula, whether that's on Tatum and Brown. So I, I, I don't disagree that there's pressure on the, on the Boston Celtics. I think the team that has the most at stake is the Philadelphia 76ers. That's because James Harden has an opt-out. There's been rumors about him maybe going back to Houston next season. There's been rumors about Doc River and his job security if the Sixers don't make at least a deep playoff run. Daryl Morey, same thing. Like, that's just the reality. The other reality about Philadelphia is this is an, is a uh, ownership group that, for the most part, has not ran it back if they don't get the results they want. Think about all of the roster turnover, the front office turnover, the coaching turnover. This feels like to me, it could be the Sixers last chance to make a deep playoff run with this core group, this coaching staff, this front office. I will say this, because I am, I am a believer. I do, I, I, we brought this up when we were talking about the Boston Celtics at the, at the very top of the show. When we talk about tier one contenders, I think you have to put Philly in that tier one. The way that James Harden played Saturday night in Milwaukee, his aggressiveness, his ability to create on drives, his ability to score out of isolation, that's been the thing that people knocked all last year. At times this year, that was going against the number one defense in the league or the number two defense in the league all season. And so for me, I'm very bullish on their chances to make a deep run. Let me say this. Um, I completely agree with J.J. on this one, Kendrick Perkins, because uh, for a, a, a number of the reasons that he brought up, uh, James Harden, uh, what his future may hold. Um, and by the way, James Harden has been playing lights out, 20 assists last night. This brother's been balling. He balls like that in the postseason. Then you're talking about a chance the Philadelphia 76ers, an elevated chance for the 76ers have to get to the NBA Finals and represent the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid, I would remind you, KP, that you brought up just a few week, couple of weeks ago how – his, his durability, his health is a question mark, and obviously you can't just summarily dismiss the, the importance of these moments because there's no guarantee that he'll ever play at this level moving forward. So I take that into consideration as well. We're talking about the future of Doc Rivers, which to me should not be up in flux. I think Doc Rivers has done a great job. I think he's proven once again that he's one of the elite coaches in the game of basketball. Obviously, he has the pulse of this team. They're going out there. They're giving max effort. I don't understand how uh, uh, P.J. Tucker, who 
people I got a lot of love for had so much time off of over a Thibault all of this time. I thought Thibault should have been a bit more active before he was moved out of there, but that's just me. But ultimately, when you take into account, and let's not forget, um, some people might say this has nothing to do with it, but if you're Josh Harris, who's trying to become an NFL owner, in the National Football, you know, National Football League with the with the Commanders, it kind of helps when you know what the basketball team you own goes out there and wins for you. It helps elevate your cachet to some degree. I don't think we can ignore that as well. But I take all of those things into consideration, and then I go to Boston, and this is another reason I'd put Philly um, in that mix in terms of having more at stake because Ime Udoka is not the coach. It's Joe Mazzula. And even though that interim tag has been stripped from him and he's been given a lengthy contract extension, the fact of the matter is, KP, you pointed out how he's still unproven. He's got some things to prove. We've talked to the health. We've talked about yeah. the health of a Robert Williams III. And if he's not healthy, right, you got that as an excuse. You got a rookie head coach, 34, 35 years of age in Missoula, who's got something to prove. All of those things are reasons that the Boston Celtics could point to to say, okay, we knocked on a door, but we didn't kick it down. Nobody wants to hear any excuses from the Philadelphia 76ers. No. You got Harden, you got Embiid, you got Maxie, who was coming off the bench, that went in the starting lineup the other day. We know that he's more explosive offensively when he's been, in, or at least statistically, when he's been in the starting lineup than coming off the bench. We think about these things with a Tobias Harris, with the Anthony Melton that they acquired, with the Shake Milton that they've had. You're looking at their depth, their athleticism, their perimeter shooting, the presence of Embiid, the point guard play of Harden, the coaching of Doc. Rivers, and you say, excuse me, you should be in a position to kick down the door. I'm not dismissing them when it comes down to them being in that tier or competing with the Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. But I will say this, if the Celtics happen not to, if the Celtics don't make it to the finals this year, right, and say they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and they lose and don't make it, what's, what's next for them? So now you have the question mark, can Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown actually get it done together? Which is a huge question mark because when we talk about the league today and we talk about all the duos around the league, I think they have earned the right to say this year because of what they did over an extended period of time that they're the best duo in the game. And so if you're the best duo in the league, then you should have no problems when you have a Marcus Smart. You have a, 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 a great veteran who has been playing well in Al Horford. You have Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White, who won Eastern Conference Player of the Week in the conference with Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo and Jason Tatum. So when you have that type of depth and you have that type of roster and you, you showed that you was able to get it done last year and overcome adversity and finish the second part of the season strong, and we've been talking about them being the favorites time and time again, that's why I say they have the most pressure. And listen, I'm telling you right now, and I'm not saying that you're saying this, Stephen A., that your point, that you're saying it or you feel this way, but the city of Boston, the state of Massachusetts, they're not trying to hear about Joe, Joe Mazzula being, you know, a first-year head coach at 34, 35 years old. They're not trying to hear a damn word about that. They want to win, and they want to win now. And there's zero excuses when you look at them from a talent aspect. Are you concerned about the Celtics? <laughs> hell yeah, I'm concerned. I'm nervous as hell right now about the Celtics. And, and Molly Hill's why, okay? One, because not only have they blown three games in a row where they were up double figures, it's the perimeter defense. It's the discipline on the offensive end. It's the lack of respect that they have for Coach Joe Mazzula. And why I say that is, is because when you respect your coach, when you respect your coach on offense, you don't take horrible shots. That's what I watched the Celtics take last night. I watched Jalen Brown take one in transition at the top of the key. I watched Marcus Smart take one after an offensive rebound when he should have dribbled it out and ran something good. Defensively, the Celtics gave up 38 points to Bridges, right? Bridges scored 38 on them. Uh, Emmanuel quickly dropped 38 on them. And then last night, Donovan Mitchell just had it his way. And then let's talk about the health of Robert Williams. Jason Tatum has been on record himself saying that Robert Williams is the most important piece for us them winning the championship. I have a high level of concern when it comes down to his health. 
because I haven't seen him put together a string of games where he's just available. Now let's talk about where the Celtics at right now. Last season, the Celtics was the hottest team in the league at this point of the season. They knew that they had to be hitting their stride and they was in must-win situations and they were peaking. So what happened when they got to the postseason? First round, swept the Brooklyn Nets because they knew what they were doing. They had an identity. They don't have that right now. And then when I look across the league, when I look at the Bucks, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Nuggets, all those teams, right now they're hitting their stride. Their, their coaches are finding their rotations. So, yes, I do have a high level of concern for the Boston Celtics because make no mistake about it, if they don't reach the NBA Finals, this season is a bust. Championships is really what's on their mind is, and, and it's on their agenda. So right now, do I have them picked as a favorite? No. Do I have levels of concern? Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I think you make some valid points, Perk, specifically about containing the basketball at the point of attack. Over the last three games, that has been an issue for them. Um, you know, if you look back probably a month ago before Milwaukee really got going on that win streak, it was, and before the trade deadline, like it, it was, I don't know if it was obvious, but you could really make an argument that the Boston Celtics were the best team in the NBA. Now I think they're in that tier of contenders Boston, Denver. Phoenix, Milwaukee, however you feel about 76ers, which we'll get to later in the show. So they're one of a number of teams. And I would say I have concerns about all teams. You know, there, there's not one team that I have no concerns about. Let me tell you my concerns with the Celtics. You said it, Perk. The health of Robert Williams III. That is absolutely a concern. Can he hold up for a two-month playoff run? Can he be available? So far this year, the, the starters, what they, the, the five guys they want to start, have only played 81 minutes together. I'm also, look, Jason Tatum's had a great year. I'm also concerned about his shooting. You know, going into Sunday's game against the Knicks, he was shooting 26% on pull-up jumpers. That was tied with R.J. Barrett for the worst in the NBA. He's been at 36% for his career. So I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the health. I want to talk about the last three games specifically and put some context on it. Malcolm Brogdon who probably will win sixth man of the year, was out Friday. He was out Sunday. Robert Williams got hurt Friday night. He missed the end of that game. He missed Sunday. He missed Monday. Last night, no Tatum, no Horford, no Robert Williams, coming off a double overtime game and a back-to-back. -back. So There's some context about these last few games. The game that was concerning, I think, was the, the Brooklyn Nets game when they're up 28 and – all of a sudden, the Brooklyn Nets are out fighting them. They got more energy. They're getting every loose ball. They're getting the easy threes. Like, that game was a little concerning. But big picture, big picture, this is still the only team in basketball that's top five in offense, that's top five in defense. They have arguably one of the deepest, most versatile teams in the NBA. They have shooting at nearly every position with Robert Williams III. And the other thing that's surprising to me, I just want to note this, because of these last two games that went into overtime and they lost. This has been a great team in the clutch all season long. They have the third best record in clutch games in the NBA. The last two games down the stretch to Perk's point, I thought the offense was bad. I thought it stagnated. I thought it got away from what they do. When the Boston Celtics are at their best, it's not when they're matchup hunting. Yeah, you can match up hunt to an extent. The Boston Celtics are at their best when they're creating opportunities for each other and not playing one-on-one -on -one basketball? <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stunned that we start off the show and um, just the level of negativity emanating from the both of you, primarily you, Kendrick Perkins. Me personally, I don't feel I, I'm not really concerned about the Boston Celtics at all, to be quite honest with you. First of all, J.J. Reddick, you know, you covered yourself because you brought up a bunch of positives that I think we have to take into consideration. And the fact of the matter is, listen, it was not good. You don't lose a 28-point lead to a Brooklyn Nets team that doesn't have KD and Kyrie on it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.